I'm Dan Edmonds and this is the new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. And I know what you're thinking, you know, this is a different version of the Highlander, right? Actually, no, it's a completely different model. They just used the Highlander name to help uh, gain some instant traction as far as uh, sales interest goes. But actually, this is significantly bigger than a Highlander. The wheelbase is almost four inches longer. It's nearly seven inches longer overall. It's two inches wider, a couple inches taller. This really slots in between the Highlander and the Sequoia. The front end looks quite a bit different from a regular Highlander because really it doesn't share any body panels. It does have some of the same themes like the grille shape, uh, but the headlights and this little brow are definitely unique. And then of course, we're looking at the Hybrid Max Platinum. So it's got this extra little splitter here on the bottom. This color is called Coastal Cream which I guess would be the color of sea foam in a surf break. I'm not quite sure, but you know, it's not quite white. I think it looks pretty good. The XLE has 18 inch wheels and tires. This Platinum has 20s and there's several different wheel designs. The sides are a lot less unique looking than the Highlander, I guess you could say. The Highlander has this kind of big swoop here that kind of looks a little bit too much like it should be on a Supra, frankly. And this is a lot cleaner and uh, more formal. Uh, I actually really like the look of the Grand Highlander. So the back end of the Grand Highlander looks really nice and clean as well. I mean, you've got this nice spoiler that carries from the roof. Uh, the Grand Highlander badging is pretty subtle. This happens to be a Platinum with a Hybrid Max powertrain. And that's why we're seeing dual exhausts back here. And of course, the tow hitch with this powertrain uh, is good for 5,000 pounds. And of course, now we've also got this little device that opens the tailgate. So here we are sitting at 21 cubic feet of storage with the third seats in use, but let's put them down. This is a 60-40 rear speed seat and uh, just put them down like this. Don't have to worry about the headrests. They go down on their own when you get to a certain point. That's a reasonably flat floor and I think now it's about 60 cubic feet. And then to put this seat down, it's a two-step operation with two different handles and you get to uh, this point. A little bit of a gap here, but reasonably flat floor. And when both of them are down, this is uh, gives the Sequoia a run for its money in terms of uh, total cargo capacity. All I can say is I was a little bit skeptical when they said that this had adult size third row leg room and headroom. But then I looked at the specs and this is actually more headroom than a Sequoia has and it's the same leg room as the Sequoia has when its seats are all the way back and its rear cargo space is jonesed. But here, I'm 6'2 and I'm fine back here. Uh, and I've got two ways to get out. It's really easy. You just push that forward. That's about as graceful as I get these days. And then I can sit 
behind the seats that I've already pre-adjusted for myself. So basically, six foot two inch Dan can sit in all three rows if there were uh, three of me. The Grand Highlander is available with three different powertrains and you can get front wheel drive or all wheel drive with two of them and the third one is all wheel drive only. So let's run through them. The uh, 2.4 liter turbo is the base engine, comes with an eight speed automatic transmission. It makes 265 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque and the fuel economy in an EPA combined sense is 22 to 24 depending on which trim level and whether you have front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And then if you move up to the hybrid, which is a traditional Toyota two motor hybrid like a Prius has, but upsized for this vehicle, it makes 243 horsepower combined and is good for 32 to 34 MPG combined, which is pretty darn good and a huge like 10 MPG improvement over the base engine. And then of course, this is the Hybrid Max. The Hybrid Max is interesting because it say, takes the same engine, the 2.4 liter turbo from the base powertrain, but it grafts an electric motor onto the back of it. And before it goes into a six speed transmission, we don't need eight speeds here because with the extra torque of the electric motor, they can make do with six. Now, this combination results in, get ready for this, 362 horsepower, which is almost 100 more than the base motor, and 400 pound-feet of torque. This could get to 60 miles an hour in less than six seconds, or right at that number. So this is gonna be pretty quick for such a big three-row SUV. And it's a hybrid, so fuel economy is better. It's primarily in the city where you get the benefits, but it ends up being 27 mpg combined overall and uh, that's pretty impressive so let's talk about pricing the grand highlander will be available this july and the starting price for the base XLE gasoline model front wheel drive is $44,405. Add $1,600 if you want all wheel drive. The limited front wheel drive with the gas engine is $49,195. And again, add $1,600 for the all wheel drive version. The XLE hybrid, which is the two motor hybrid, that starts at $46,005. Again, if you want all wheel drive at 1600 bucks. As far as what we're driving, the Hybrid Max, well, the Limited, which is the entry level for the Hybrid Max, if you can call it that, is $55,375. Now, we're sitting in the Platinum, top of the line. That's $59,460. And all wheel drive does come standard, so you don't have to worry about adding 1600 bucks for either of the Hybrid Max ones. Anyhow, that's just under $60,000. I don't know what kind of options list they have. We haven't seen that yet. Yeah, we're gonna have to dig into that in more detail when we have all the details. Well, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the Grand Highlander, and I think it fills an important gap in Toyota's product lineup. You know, the regular Highlander is a little bit small. The third row, not very good. Uh, certainly cars like the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, you know, they offered a little bit more of that long distance three row SUV comfort that the Highlander didn't quite deliver. And then of course, you know, the next step up from there is the Sequoia, but that's a body on frame uh, off-road vehicle. You know, it's kind of like a big forerunner. It, it isn't for everybody, uh, you know, isn't as smooth riding as a you know, crossover SUV would be. And of course they've given it a solid rear axle and made it even more trucky than it was before. So, you know, that opened up space for the Grand Highlander and it really does give you a lot of the room of the Sequoia, but it gives you the smooth ride and fuel economy of the Highlander. And that's not a bad thing. 